Because we know you are real. We give you glory, Lord, because you set up high, but you are awesome in every way. Lord, there is nothing that ever escapes your knowledge, but everything is open to you. There is nothing that got by you. You saw today before it ever happened. Father, you have already given us grace that will be sufficient. Lord, help us to walk in that grace right now. But Father, you said that if we, Lord God, would call upon you, you would answer. And Father, we need an answer right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for my mother right now in Jesus' name. Father, you know how to go in and make the crooked straight. Line everything up in its proper place, oh God, so that, Lord, she will report like all the rest of us who have been healed by you. That I am healed, Lord God, and, and give a praise right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you right now in advance, oh God, for what you're going to do. We thank you in advance, oh God. So settle our spirit, oh God. Settle our soul, Lord God, because we know, Lord God, that you're in control. And we will give you glory. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen and amen, amen, amen. If you have your Bibles, if you would go with me. To the book of Ephesians. I'm just going to read one verse, but I'm going to go to several different passages of Scripture. And just like um, Pastor uh, uh, Simon, don't 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 get don't get mad at me uh, if I use the new NLV. Amen. Don't, don't get mad at me. It's okay. It just sometimes I, you, when you want to make a point, you, you want to make it clear. Uh, and sometimes the thous and the therefores kind of throw some people off. Can we say amen? Can we say amen? Now, let me. Yes. Verse. Verse number 11. When you have it, say amen. I'm sorry, Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4, I apologize. Ephesians, the fourth chapter. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Ephesians 4 and 11. When you have it, stand on your feet and honor the word of the Lord. It says, now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church. The apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work. Everybody say his work. And build up the church, that is the body of Christ. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of the Son of God that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. There will, then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed to and, uh, and tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of the body, that means the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. 
Everybody say perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts to grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. Can we say amen? You may be seated. I want you to look at your neighbor. If you would very quickly tell them it's in the body. Now, now look at them and say, I want what you've got for me. Now tell them, I want what you've got for me. Now say it like you mean it. Say it like you really believe they got something for you. Say, I want what you've got for me. All right, give the Lord a hand praise if you would, please. Give the Lord a hand praise. Give the Lord a hand praise. Now for this assignment, the Lord has told me and instructed me for you to take hands with somebody. Grab hands with somebody and keep those hands. I'll tell you when to let those hands go, but make sure you grab. Yes, you grab all the way across if you can. If you grab all the way across, if you, you might want to make it comfortable just a little because you're going to hold them for a little while. Amen. You're going to hold them just for a little while, just for a little while. I Bear with me. I promise you at the end of this message, it will all speak. You'll understand. You'll understand it better by and by, by and by. And, and I want to open up by saying that there's, there's been so much negativity against the body of Christ, against the church. There's negativity about believers it, to the point point where you almost ashamed to tell people people are ashamed to tell that they are a believer because we have allowed the world to shape what we believe we've allowed our government we've allowed people to tell us what we should be believe not only what the church should believe but even what the church should be doing i don't know about you but i got one boss and 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 and, and he does not he does not live on 1600 pennsylvania avenue nor does he live in the state house but but he lives a much higher place he holds a much greater position because he is the God over everything he is the boss over everything because my Bible even tells me that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and everyone that dwells therein and he's the one who founded it so I I, I, I got to say to you you need to learn we have to learn to take more pride in who we are Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, he was just walking all over my text. I was telling Bishop Mitchell, man, I don't really need to preach this or, or say anything because he just really said everything that I'm about to say. I'm just going to reiterate and I'm going to restructure just a little bit if you, don't, if, you, if you allow me, just a little bit. And, and, and because the Bible says in Matthew 24 and 12, because iniquity shall abound, that the love of many shall wax cold. And right now in the time that we live in, every the, you can see the love of those that were on fire for the Lord at one time. Now they, they seem to not have that desire anymore to go any further than where they're at right now. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, right now, you got to grow from where you're at. You have to grow from where you're at. There are no graduates in here. Uh, there is nobody that can say they have got to the place that they don't need more and more of the word. They need, we need more and more of the word. We need more and more of God as much as we can get. As much as we can get. I'm going to say it again. As much as we can get. Because if not, then the negativity of the world, they will, the world will have you living in their reality when you know that your reality their reality is not your reality yeah? because my faith is not here. The Constitution and one of the first points, I got about four points that I'm going to hit and I'm going to talk about the Constitution of a believer. It's found in Hebrews, the 11th chapter. Y'all know it. Y'all know it. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. And it goes on to say by this, the elders obtained a good report. Now that's, that should tell us something that our faith has something good at the end it does we're not just believing just to believe but we have something that is going to be we'll be able at the end it will testify for us it will tell us something it will do something for us I'm serious about this thing because why I know that God has given us something that is greater than anything in this world uh, he gave us his spirit it's greater than anything in this world he gave gave us his love 
and he gave us, he shows us his grace. Now, if in one passage of scripture in James, and I'm trying to slow down because I'm, 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 I feel this thing in me. I really feel this thing in me. James says this. He says in chapter one, verse two, my brother, and count it all joy when you fall into divers, Tim patience knowing this that the trying of your faith worketh patience but let patience have her perfect work that ye may be perfect entire wanting nothing I don't know about you uh, but but I have faith without works is what dead I have we have to have faith at the at the very uh, everything that we do, everything depends on what we believe. The foundation of how I stand is what I believe. I don't do anything without believing it. I didn't get up this morning without believing I could get up. I don't do every I, everything I do. I lean over and tie my shoes because why I believe I can tie my shoe. You got up and went to work, some of you, this morning because you believe that you could. When you got in the car, you turned the ignition on and in the car started started and you believed it was going to start without you getting a I don't think anybody if you did you if you got a puddle jumper as we used to call it it's okay you didn't get up under the hood and test the battery you didn't have a battery tester to test to see if the battery you believe that that car would start when you put the key in the ignition and the constitution of a believer should always believe that whatsoever God said it is true no matter what it looks like but but the only time the devil messes with our faith is when we try, when we put it in God. As long as you can put it in the State Department, he ain't got no problem with that. As long as you can put it in a program, he ain't got no problem with that. But the soon that you got to stand on God and not move from where you're at because it looks crazy where you're standing. But yet and still, you're going to stand there anyhow because God told you to do it. Oh God. And that's the thing that that, that we have to understand when God tells us to do something we have to do it it doesn't matter what we ask it doesn't matter how we feel because the way we feel will go from one end of the spectrum to the other and I'm so glad that faith is not based on my feeling but faith is based on my knowledge it's what I know I know God to be a healer why because he healed me before I know God can open up doors why because he's opened up doors before I know God can bring people out and save a wretch or save somebody that has not even thought about him he can change and turn their life why because he changed and turned my life somebody say amen so we have to, we cannot waver in our faith, not in this time period. It's crucial. It's very crucial. And let me share something with you. And then I, this is just something that dropped in my spirit. The Bible just tells us, Jesus said, let your light so shine. Now, he didn't say let your great light, let your powerful light. He didn't say your magnificent light. He just said, let your light shine. Now, some of us have been working so hard to have a great light that we don't understand that darkness doesn't need great light light it just needs light my phone right now if you turn out all the lights in here right now and it was pitch black the light on my phone would get us from here to the back door why because it doesn't take a great light in darkness it just takes some light so if you want to sing the song this little light of mine don't worry about it because you can sing it because that light will make a difference in darkness can we say amen and so now that the first thing a constitution of a believer is his faith uh, that's the thing that drives us that's the thing that holds us together that's the thing that keeps me moving uh, I don't move because we have a building I don't move because pe members show up because if that's the case I probably had quit sometime earlier but I'm so thankful that my faith has been holding strong uh, my faith has held strong even tonight because my body my feelings and emotions say go to mama uh, but the Lord said be still uh, and know that I am God uh, my faith says stones are here uh, you can't do nothing no way uh, you can't do nothing but stand there but God is able to move where you can't even move uh, so I thank God that's the constitution of a believer uh, that's the first thing uh, the second thing is respecting our differences uh, if we're going to be the body we got to respect each other's difference uh, we have faith but we got to respect each other's differences 
Thank you, my brother. He brought that on. Oh. He brought that out so clearly. But I want you to go. Uh, uh, they'll have it on the screen for you. You don't have to go because you're holding hands. Keep holding hands. Just keep holding hands. <laughs> I want you to go to Romans, uh, the 14th chapter, and, and listen to what it says. Uh, it says, accept other believers who are weak in faith uh, and don't argue with them about what they think is right or wrong. I'm going to say that one more time. Uh, receive, and then the, the King James, it says, receive those that are weak in the faith. We always thought, we're taught that if you ain't strong, uh, I ain't got no business hanging around you. Uh, if you ain't strong as I am, uh, and you hear it preached all the time uh, on television across the airways, uh, that if they don't celebrate you, uh, if you can't celebrate me, uh, I ain't got nothing to do with you, uh, because I want somebody to lift me up. Uh, but you didn't even realize he said we're a part of a body uh, so I cannot just uh, disown you uh, because you don't believe like I believe uh, you don't have the same amount of faith that I do uh, now he uses food for example uh, just to show what he's talking about uh, just because some eat food uh, and others don't others eat vegetables uh, that doesn't make their faith Oh, God, uh, that doesn't make God uh, any less in their life. Uh, just understand if you got if God has been a blessing to you uh, and he's shown you some light uh, or a greater revelation. Uh, don't get caught up in the fact that you got a greater revelation. Uh, understand just because you have it, it may just be for you. It may just be for you, but I love this, this passage because it, it goes on to say, for instance, one person believes it's all right to eat anything, but another believer has sensitive conscience will eat only vegetables. Those who feel free to eat anything must not look down on those who don't. Those who don't eat certain foods must not condemn those who do, for God has accepted them. And you got to remember, if we're all part of the body, this is next verse should put it all in check for you it puts it all in check why because it says who are you to condemn someone else's servant uh, you didn't save nobody uh, who are you to talk about anybody else uh, and if God has called them uh, if God has their, if their believer uh, even though their faith may not be like your faith uh, you cannot condemn them uh, because they're not serving you no way uh, they're not serving you no way. Uh, they are responsible to the Lord. Uh, so let him judge uh, whether they are right or whether they're wrong. Uh, and with the Lord's help, everybody say the Lord's help. Uh, they will do what is right and will receive his approval. Uh, oh, God, don't, don't leave them alone. Look at your neighbor. Say, leave them alone. 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 The reason why we're not the strong body that we need to be uh, is because we are trying to judge between each other's belief system. Uh, and if we keep trying to judge between each other's belief system, uh, then you're going to be in trouble uh, because I don't may not believe as, as the same way you do. Uh, I may not have the same principles. Uh, of, of celebrating certain things uh, or holding dear to certain things uh, that you hold true to. Uh, and you got to be careful not to put somebody down because uh, in the same way some think one day is more holy than the other while others think every day is alike, you should each be fully convinced uh, that whichever day you choose is acceptable. Uh, those who worship the Lord on a special day do it to honor him. Uh, those who eat any kind of food do so to honor the Lord uh, since they give thanks to God for eating uh, and those who refuse to eat certain foods also want to please the Lord and give thanks to God uh, for we do not live for ourselves uh, or die for ourselves if we live uh, it's to honor the Lord if we die it's to honor the Lord so whether we live or die guess what y'all we belong to the Lord uh, tell your neighbor I'm glad you belong to the Lord now we got to respect so that tells us we have to respect the differences uh, don't get caught up in all of that stuff uh, we got to have the constitution of a believer uh, but then once we get in this body we got to respect the differences uh, the third thing is uh, love me enough to hold on to me uh, look at your neighbor and say neighbor uh, love me enough to hold on to me uh, oh God I thank him I thank him I thank him uh, that comes from Ephesians the fourth chapter that we just read uh, and it's verse number Number one, it says, therefore, Paul is talking. He said, therefore, I, a prisoner of serving the Lord, beg you. He did. He said, I 
beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling. I hear you, Pastor. I hear you. Lead a life worthy of your calling, uh, for you have been called by God. Uh, I didn't call you into this life. Uh, I, matter of fact, I don't have the power to keep you no way. Uh, the only thing I have is the word of the Lord. Uh, and if you take the word, then you will be blessed. Uh, but look what it says. It says, always be humble and gentle. Uh, always. He didn't say every now and then. Uh, he didn't say when God has to put his hand on you uh, because you've been standing up when you should have been sitting down. Uh, you're talking when you need to be quiet. Uh, you're moving and pushing people out of the way uh, so you can get to your agenda. Oh man. So you can get to your agenda. Uh, he says always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other. Uh, look at your neighbor. I'm going to be patient with you. Uh, I'm going to be patient with you. Uh, making allowances Oh, I hear you, Bishop Mitchell, right now uh, for what you preach, making allowances for each other's faults because of your love. Oh, God, uh, don't, oh, don't, God, uh, making allowances for each other's faults. Uh, and for all of you that think you ain't got no faults, uh, you just haven't looked into the perfect law of liberty yet. Uh, because if you look in the perfect law of liberty, uh, you'll find that you ain't perfect yet. Uh, you haven't arrived in spite of your revelation. Uh, you haven't arrived in spite of who you think what name they call you uh, you haven't arrived so look at your neighbor uh, say love me enough to hold on to me uh, because that's what we need in the body of Christ uh, we have to have the constitution of a believer uh, we got to respect each other's differences uh, but also we need somebody to love me uh, and not to hang on uh, even though I don't act like you do uh, even though I may not worship like you do uh, but hold on to me uh, don't cast me aside Aside, uh, because I may not speak in the tongues that you speak in. Uh, don't cast me aside uh, just because I don't shout around the church uh, like you. Don't cast me aside, but hold on to me. Uh, when you see me fall, uh, you know what the scripture says. Uh, if you see your brother overtaken in a fault, uh, ye that are spiritual, uh, go to this person. But guess what? Considering your own self, uh, because it could have been you. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it could have been you. Uh, it could have been you. Don't ever think that you can't fall. Don't ever think that you can't have a, mis mis a mistake in your life. I'm, I'm 57 years old and I preach this gospel. I pastor this church. I'm the leaders of different things. But guess what? I make some mistakes. Oh, yes, I do. I make some mistakes. But I say, Lord, I repent because I know that, oh God, if I should sin, uh, guess what I have an advocate uh, between God the Father uh, which is the man Jesus Christ uh, and we're not the author and finisher uh, of anybody's faith anyway uh, and so we got to be careful thinking uh, that we control somebody's destiny uh, just because we're here uh, just because I'm who I am uh, but God is the controller uh, remember we live not unto ourselves uh, we don't die unto ourselves because we are the Lord's uh, so I love me you gotta love me uh, enough to hold on to me uh, not to let me fall not to let me fail uh, just because you don't agree with me uh, you're gonna let me fall to the ground uh, so you can feel good about picking me up uh, but you're really not supposed to let me fall uh, you're supposed to hold on so tight uh, but in order to do that uh, I got to be connected uh, I've got to be connected to you uh, more than just coming to church uh, more than just worshiping together uh, I've got to have some connection with you uh, woe be unto the child of God uh, who has more worldly friends uh, than and they got Christian friends. Uh, woe unto the child of God uh, who thinks that having worldly friends uh, are the are better because they can't really hurt you. Uh, well, the devil is a lie. Uh, hurt is a part of life. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, hurt is a part of life. Uh, you don't have to be a preacher. Uh, you don't have to be a, a songster. Uh, you don't have to be a bishop. Uh, when you got, when you were growing up, uh, somebody hurt you. Uh, somebody talked about you. Uh, somebody put you down. Uh, so don't get in church uh, and act like you ain't never been put down. Uh, don't get in church uh, and act like you ain't never been talked about. Uh, don't get in church uh, and then act like ain't nobody ever misused you uh, because that's a part of life. Uh, 
I was misused long before I became a preacher. Uh, I had folk talk about me long before I was a preacher. Uh, so that has nothing to do with it. Uh, but the enemy will magnify it uh, to make you think that it has something to do with it. Uh, but it really, the church ain't got nothing to do with it. Uh, well, pastor didn't speak to me. Uh, and believe me, I had a member that said that. Uh, he walked right past me. He didn't even speak to me. Uh, and all I, I, I just wanted to have five minutes of his time. Uh, and he didn't even speak to me. Uh, and so they went home. Uh, and they sulked about it. Uh, and then when I found out, I said, hey, 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 wait a minute. Uh, I didn't even know you were there. Uh, because oftentimes when you when you really tied into what you're going to preach uh, and what you're out to do, uh, you don't see nobody. Uh, I don't know what's going on sometimes in the congregation. Uh, but I don't want to stop right here. Uh, and this is where we're going to close this out. Uh, because I got to let you know why you're holding that hand. Uh, because you're holding that hand. Uh, because sometimes uh, you got to be close to me uh, in order to feel what I'm feeling. Uh, you can't be so separated from me uh, that you you can never feel me. Uh, we got to start learning uh, that we are the body. Uh, but I love this passage in Ephesians uh, because it makes good sense. Uh, he makes the whole body fit perfectly uh, together. Uh, that each part uh, does its own work. Uh, but I'm like this, this one. Uh, it, look what it says. Uh, it says it helps the other parts grow uh, so that the whole body is healthy growing and full of love uh, the reason why the lord told me to have you hold your hands uh, is because we got to get better connected uh, we got to get better connected uh, because you got something for me uh, and i want what god has put in you for me uh, i'm gonna pull on it uh, i'm gonna tug on you uh, i'm not trying to just get close to you uh, just to get close to you uh, for appearance sake uh, but i'm gonna get close to you uh, because you got something uh, I need uh, and I want you to tell your neighbor right now uh, say neighbor uh, I want what I got uh, what God has put in you for me uh, that's what I want uh, I want what you got for me uh, stop holding don't be stingy uh, whatever God has for me uh, I want you to give it to me uh, but I gotta connect with you uh, in order to get it uh, Pastor Mungai uh, and Pastor Minor, I've got to get closer to you so I can get what God has put in you for me. Because why? It's going to help me. Oh, Bishop Mitchell, I got to get closer to you. That means I got to spend some time with you. Not just at Unity Fellowship, but I got to start having some cups of coffee because I know he likes coffee. I got to start having some cups of coffee with him. I got to sit down with him. Why? Because he's got something in him for me. Oh, Pastor K, I've got to talk to you more. I can't allow another month to go by and wait till October huh, when we have the fall oh God huh, fellowship huh, I gotta connect with you huh, or even if it ain't but once a week huh, if I start with once a week huh, it might come to twice a week huh, if I start with twice a week huh, it might go to three days huh, but whatever I have to do huh, I've got to connect huh, because you're the body huh, and you got something for me huh, and I want it huh. I'm telling you now I want it. Uh, Pastor Lawson, uh, I love you like a father uh, because you got some wisdom. Uh, but that doesn't mean uh, just because you're older uh, and I'm a little younger, uh, that doesn't mean we can't hang out. Uh, and I got to work on myself, uh, not work on him. Uh, I got to work on me uh, so that I can get connected. Uh, because as long as I'm connected to him, uh, then he can feel my pain. Uh, I don't have to run to the world. Uh, I got all the help I need uh, right here uh, in this house uh, Pastor Tyner uh, my good friend uh, I know we are gonna do some things uh, but Pastor Tyner uh, I gotta connect with you uh, beyond these four walls uh, it can't always be a project uh, that we're working on uh, sometimes uh, I gotta jump on the back of your Harley uh, and see if I can take a ride with you uh, I gotta see if you got an extra helmet uh, to see if I can ride with you uh, because the more we're together the more we pour in the more we're connected the more we stay together 
Brother Andre, pastor, I ain't left you out, my brother. You younger than I am. You work an odd shift, but that don't mean nothing. I'll meet you at the door, holding some breakfast in my hand. If you stay awake just an hour, I'll talk to you. Even if you say, pastor, let's wait till it's after I wake up. I'll get, oh God, I'll cut my time just so I can connect because you got something that I need and I want it. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, you got something that I want. You got something that I need. You got something I need. Give it to me right now. If it's prayer, some of you right now are holding somebody's hand that's sick in their body. You need right now to pray for them. But if you don't feel them, if you're not connected, you can't ever know what's going on with them. Everybody in here that's a part of the Unity Fellowship, it's time. We've had church. We have church all the time but it's time to get connected because you got something that I need and I want it right now I ain't oh God because I believe what the word says I believe what God says and if God says you got it I want it look at your neighbor say neighbor if you got it I want it pour it to me give me what I need because at the end of the day we're all gonna be stronger at the end of the day we'll love each other better at the end of a day we'll be more powerful than we've ever been in our whole life but I gotta get what you got for me I gotta connect Whatever you got for me, I want it. My brother from Full Gospel, we're going to connect. You know we are. But I want whatever you got for me. Don't hold back. If God tell you to give me a word, if God tell you to lay hands, I want it. Because why? It's for the perfecting of the body. It makes me stronger. The more I connect, the stronger I get. The more I stay apart, the weaker I get. But I refuse to allow this word uh, to not have effect uh, in me. Uh, so get ready. Uh, get ready. Uh, tell your neighbor. Uh, get ready. Uh, get ready. Uh, get ready. Uh, get ready. Uh, I'm going to get your number. Uh, get ready. Uh, I'm coming by your house. Uh, get ready. Uh, I'm going to find out where you live. Uh, get ready. Uh, get ready. Uh, get ready. Uh, Cause I want uh, what you got uh, for me. I want what you got for me. I want what you got for me. I gotta preach this Sunday to my church. You know why? Because we ain't tight as we need to be. We ain't connected like we need to be. Somebody's losing out because uh, you're not here. Uh, somebody's losing out because you don't want to be friends. Uh, somebody's losing out because you ain't connected. Uh, but I'm going to get connected because I want what you have for me. Y'all got something for me. I know you do. You've been sitting on it. You've been holding it back. But I'm coming for it now. <laughs> I'm coming for it. And don't believe I don't have something for you. Because uh, I'm going to have something too. Uh, God, that's how we share. Uh, that's how God grows us. Uh, he don't grow us uh, just by what we go through. Uh, he grows us uh, by how we love one another. Uh, the only witness that we have for the world. Uh, he said, by this will may all men know. Uh, that ye are my disciples. Uh, that ye have love uh, one to another. Uh, not holding on to it. Uh, but making sure there's a interaction uh, as much as possible. 
as much as possible. This is the word of the Lord. We are the church of the living.